All right, Johnny Dirt Track here for St. Louis Dirt Track Racing uh, with Tyler Carpenter. All right, Tyler, here's how we're going to do this first dash out of the box. We're going to do a rapid fire questionnaire. All right. All right. You ready? You got to answer fast. Okay? Together. Where are you from? Parkersburg. Are you married? Not yet. Not yet. You got any kids? Five. What's your nickname? Kamikaze Kid. And where did you get that? From an old fella back home said I was a wild man growing up. <laughs> All right, what's your favorite food? It'd have to be uh, tacos. Tacos. What's your favorite TV show? Family Guy. Favorite movie? Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. All right, where did your car number come from? 29, where'd you get that? The 28, it come from... 28, sorry. Yeah, you're good. It come from... Uh, that originally wasn't supposed to be my number. When I was first started racing, my very first, it was a compact car, front wheel drive four cylinder, when I was 12 years old. We bought this little um, Eagle Talon, and uh, the car was rolled when we bought it, so we got a pretty good deal on it. So we cut the top off of it and put a roll cage in it. But when we got the cage in it, that original top wouldn't fit back on it. <laughs> well, why that was in the makings, Dad bought a car off of uh, Harold Redmond Sr. And, uh, it had a, a good roof and windows and stuff on it. It was a dirt late model. And uh, and keep in mind, this was a compact car, so it was just a regular daily driver vehicle. So, but it, we was I was supposed to go race that thing that night, and uh, the roof wouldn't fit, so I was all bummed out, like, Dad, going, what are we going to do now? And Dad said, hang on a minute, it ain't over yet. So he grabbed that, th that roof and just fastened it to the top of my car over there. And uh, it had number 28 on it, so we just spray painted 28 in the sides of it and just rolled with it. It just stuck from and there. And it stayed there from you there. Know, it's always unique to find out the car numbers and stuff of where they come from. So that's a good start. It's a unique story right there. All right, do you plan on racing the entire summer national journey? It's definitely uh, thought about. And, and like I say, we're planning on, I think we're going to try to do it. You know, if, if we're, I think if we're pretty competitive, you know, top five, maybe top 10 at some places, it, you're not going to win them all, obviously, but a guy wants to. But if you're, if you're kind of staying afloat, I'm going to keep digging, you know, I'm going I'm to keep going to where I can't know more. And, at least where I feel like it's feasible, you know. It's, I think uh, we're going to try to do the whole first leg of it, and if we're doing good, we'll keep on going. If not, we'll pull out. Now, the word on the street is you're the next big thing headed for this summer national journey. So, what, what's your answer to that? That's just rumors. Just rumors. No, nah, man. I, I got a lot of confidence in it, and I've kind of heard about these events, and uh, I've seen some of them. You know, they're little bull rings, and, and that kind of suits me. So. Any quarter mile 3 H track that I can race these guys on and race against these top of the league guys, I feel real comfortable and I just feel like I'm just as good, if not better, than them on some of these tracks and track conditions. So uh, I feel like it's a fair game. Well, speaking of racing against these guys, let's go with your top two. Who is the top two guys that you want to beat every race night? I don't even know who all's running, to be honest, but I, I guarantee you, it, it Bobby Pierce is going to be right there. Um, Brian Shirley's going to be right there. Um, like I say, and it, it's sad, I don't even know who all is going to follow this tour. I, I'm so in the dark on all this stuff, I just go at it, and I, you know, I, I roll up at an event, like I ain't even watched a race from Brownstown yet. You hear the track, they say she's always slick, so I just took their word for it. Right. I haven't watched a race at this place. I know it's stupid being like, you know, being as a, a job, you'd think you would uh, study that stuff and try to see what it takes, but I, I'm the type that I like just rolling up and see what I got. So hopefully you unload, unload good and we're good for the rest of the night, right? Yeah, about any quarter to three eighths, I feel comfortable with whatever I got in the car. And I know that it takes a lot of guys and a lot of sponsors and stuff to make this stuff go around. So let's talk about those a little bit. Who are some of your sponsors and some of your big guys that help you out? Man, without them, you ain't going to do nothing, like I say. And and for one, this big hauler right here, that's Chuck Longbreak. He's got quality demolition. So without him, I probably definitely wouldn't be running this tour because... I, it's tough, you know, and, and he's got a hauler like that. You, you basically got to shop on wheels. Back at the house, I just got a pickup truck and a trailer. So that makes it a lot better, more beneficial to come on these tours like this. So I got to thank him with quality demolition. I got to thank um, Eisner Race Engines. He's one builds my motors, him and Kevin Anel. They build a really good motor. Um, Kryptonite Race Cars, that's family owned business. It's me and dad, all of us. So got to thank Kryptonite Race Cars and dad. Um, Octane Race Products, The Jones Show. Swift Springs, Bilstein Race Shocks, um, Holdren Construction, Aggressive Wraps, um, QA1, Go Lithium Batteries, um, RTI, uh, Spring Smashers. Um, let me see, make sure I ain't forgetting nobody. We're, yeah, Weir's Machine, um, they build some of the best products on the market, so you gotta thank Chad at Weir's. Um, ML Performance, that's my shock guy, Matt. 
he's a pretty good dude, you know, he helps me out a ton. Um, I don't know, I'm not around the car, but if you're not mentioned, you know, you ain't forgot. It's uh, just heat of the moment. I'll thank you in the long run. Everybody's important. That's now, right. One quick, one quick question. The Gateway Dirt Nationals. Man, it just what was that feeling like to come out of that victorious the way you did? Crazy, really, man. It was uh, really emotional for me. You know, I, I'm not the type that's going to cry around or whatever, but it it hit me pretty hard. You know, it's, just, it's like a dream come true, something that you pictured or had an image it that you'd love just to have to happen or maybe just be amongst that kind of atmosphere or crowd and it's uh for it to actually happen it it, it still gives me chills today talking about it just because i feel like you know i feel like i'm as good as them guys but i feel like i don't belong and uh just to be able to make that happen whether it's luck skill talent brain dead whatever you want to call it man I, it happens so you can't take that from me be honest with you i just got chills with you talking about it right there because me and my son we were right there watching it and uh cheering everybody on every lap and it's it was a crazy weekend and it will be again hopefully if we get to do it again this year so it's it's kind of been crazy with this 2020 stuff it has so, man it's it's wild but all you can do is keep on keeping on that's right we appreciate you and uh good luck going through the summer nationals and uh hopefully you can make it through phase one and uh, enjoy your time and uh, get to phase two and see if you can may maybe get a championship in the summer nationals we're after it bud all right i appreciate it hey thank Tyler you right there for st louis dirt track racing